Broadcasting live from the moon and back, this is The Coin Chat, the most trusted voice for all things cryptocurrency. Each week, we dissect an important issue and cut through the noise and misinformation out there in the world of blockchain, cryptocurrency, and ICOs, capturing the facts that truly matter to you that will give you an edge in this fast-moving emerging market. The who, what, where, when, and how of what you need to know in crypto to get ahead so you don't get left behind. Now, here are your co-hosts, financial and crypto experts, Yuri Cataldo and Steve Good. Hey, this is Steve Good on the Coin Chat with my co-host Yuri Cataldo, and today we are with a presidential candidate who's also a big fan of blockchain, Andrew Yang. Andrew, welcome to the show. It's great to have you on. Mm-hmm. Thank you for having me, uh, both of you. It's a pleasure to be here. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. So yes, I'm joining from joining from my home. I was joking with the guys. It's my kids' room. It's uh, even presidential candidates. Uh, have to hide from their families sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? I'm hiding behind a green screen here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so oh. I'm just glad I have a family to hide from. <laughs> True. <laughs> that has good and bad sometimes. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think what's, it's great to have you on the show. Really, you know, thank you so much for taking the time out. I know you're a busy guy. You're out. You've got a lot of things to do to raise awareness of your, your presidential candidacy and generating all that interest. And, you know, I think for Yuri and I, we just wanted to have a chance to tell you, to talk with you and to help you raise a bit of awareness around your campaign and kind of get to know a little bit about what you're doing. Um, of course, from our perspective, we'd love to hear a lot more about your interests and your, uh, your view on blockchain. And we've got some questions we put together for you to just, you know, have a, you know, an open discussion and just kind of hear where, where it's all going to go and what you, what you see is happening. Well, thank you for that. And thank you uh, for sensing that we're incredibly aligned um, where uh, my vision of the economy is very consistent with the the people who are in the cryptocurrency community and are working on blockchain Mm -hmm. uh, advancements where um, we need to move towards a more decentralized system for sure that's more transparent Uh, and blockchain you know it's like many other technologies where it's going to have its drawbacks at various times uh, but the long-term potential is staggering Uh, and really the the And the reason I fell into uh, so many friends in the community is that I found that approximately 99% of people in the blockchain community are pro-universal basic income, uh, Mm -hmm. which, as you may know, is the the central pillar of my campaign. Yes. Um, So so I arrived at that through the the reality that we are automating away millions of American jobs. Um, We've already automated away 4 million manufacturing jobs leading to Donald Trump's election in 2016. Uh, And now we need to start evolving. And to me, uh, moving toward the blockchain is part of that evolution. Um, So one of the things we're looking at right now is we could potentially enable voting on the blockchain um, in a way that would free people up from these um, lines at poll stations and all these systems that everyone's like not even sure if they're getting hacked by the Russians and the rest of it. Yeah, (laughs) right. There are things we can do. I was just at a meeting uh, of people who are looking to distribute universal basic income on the blockchain, which I think is where it will go eventually. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm also for the implementation of a national digital uh, currency um, to supplement the dollar because there are many, many things that we could do uh, that the dollar cannot do. So uh, this campaign really, and and one of the jokes I tell is that people sometimes call me a futurist, um, but I believe I'm a presentist. It's just that most of the politicians are stuck in the past because that's just their experience. For sure. Um, but for me, yeah. I've been a serial entrepreneur. I've worked in technology for about 20 years and I know what's possible. Um, so with people like you, hopefully we can spread that word to people around the country. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, it's you. Interesting, so it's an interesting point that you made. You raised a couple of comments in, in this that I wanted to pick up on. Um, one was the you know, transparency, which, as you probably know, with cryptocurrency, when you get into privacy coins, it creates some interesting dilemmas, especially for the IRS and for tax. The other thing that I'm wondering about, so I'm just going to ask you these two things together, Please. is that is that you know I'm I'm based in London, by the way. Yuri's based in in Boston. So as an outsider that spent most of my last two years in the crypto world as an advisor to other companies, what I've seen is a complete absence of the U.S. being really present mostly because of regulation, because of the SEC. And I'm just wondering if you have any particular views on how we can open up the potential channels 
for allowing the U.S. to really thrive in a cryptocurrency community or a crypto community, a blockchain community, when there's been so much that's restricted America, while we've seen China and Korea and Japan and India and the and you know and some parts of Europe just thrive, Russia thriving because you know technology and people have been able to really get into it. And I've seen the U.S. just kind of fall behind on some respects. Do you have any you know thoughts on privacy and its impact on tax? And also how we can open up the channels to to really open up the doors for more innovation in crypto and blockchain for the U.S. You know, I, I think the, the second point is so key where people think of America as like the hotbed of innovation and technology. But in reality, uh, the American, certainly the political system is quite backward and retrograde and, and incredibly bureaucratic. And you can see it with the blockchain uh, and other cryptocurrencies where the U.S. has essentially thrown its hands up and been like, you know, don't really have an approach here. <laughs> so yeah. uh, and so as a result, um, certainly there are many people in America who are making uh, use of cryptocurrencies, but it's uh, it's not as supported and there's a lot more confusion mm -hmm. in the yeah. U.S. because the place is not as forward looking. So uh, I hope to be able to change that. I mean, as president, I believe I can uh, start to move America forward. And one of one of the other jokes I tell is that the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes meth. Um, <laughs> where, where his goal is to freeze time and turn the clock backwards, and we need to accelerate time and move it forwards. Um, and that includes certainly having a much more intelligent approach to the blockchain uh, and other technologies that would um, really... So I, I think the other thing that's going on in the U.S. that's very painful to admit is that there's just a lot of rent seeking in the US. And the truth is if you had the blockchain um, uh, and other technologies fully revved up, then you would end up disintermediating accounting firms and law firms and financial institutions. Mm -hmm. And those institutions really control much of the American system where no one wants to let anything out that's going to end up disrupting their revenue streams. Interesting. Jerry, over to you, go ahead. I've got some yeah, couple yeah. questions. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I you're one of the few presidential candidates who are accepting cryptocurrencies on, uh, on, on your site, which I think is amazing. Um, and you yourself have mentioned on your website that uh, the campaign donors have to register and also not to share your wallet address so that people can't make untraceable donations. I'd like to hear your thoughts on how this could eventually, uh, uh, eventually maybe affect politics in the future. Because a lot of people who are, a lot of people believe that when they hear Bitcoin or blockchain or cryptocurrencies, they think of laundry, money launderers, drug dealers, and then dark money. So how would you approach this idea of getting cryptocurrencies involved without that dark money aspect? Hmm. Yeah, and, and hopefully, uh, like even my campaign can be an example of this, where if it's simply an exchange of value, there's nothing sinister about it. Um, right. And certainly for us, I joke that you could donate chickens to my campaign as long as I knew that it was you and like, you know, the chickens are <laughs> like worth a certain amount. Um, and so, so you can't just anonymously donate Ether or Bitcoin to, to our campaign from FEC rulings. Like you just have to tell us who you are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and if we were to get something anonymous, then unfortunately we couldn't make use of it. So that would sort of defeat the purpose. Um, but hopefully my campaign can shine a light on the fact that this is a, a great, way to exchange value and, and transfer value to another party um, and that you know my, my campaigns are already collected uh, thousands of dollars in cryptocurrency donations and uh, we hope that continues um, yeah. it, it's something you know mm -hmm. I, I want to I've always want to demonstrate that I'm very very aligned with the values of the, the community um, and so hopefully like you said like we can disabuse people of the notions that like anything to do with cryptocurrency means you're you know a drug dealer or something right. So, you know, the fact that you have the, you know, Bitcoin mentioned on your website is interesting because one of the things that we've seen running a YouTube show, having website and all the rest is because of the word cryptocurrency or Bitcoin anywhere through any of our channels, we can't advertise anything. And I'm wondering, do you have the same problems having a website that has we accept Bitcoin causing you any problems with advertising? And generally for all the rest of us out, if you're not having any problems, if for the, for the rest of us who are struggling to just run any form of advertising on anything that we do, what's your thought on that about how much we're being blocked from talking about what we're doing and how we're educating people in crypto or blockchain? 
Well, that's really interesting. I didn't realize that because uh, we haven't had those problems and it could be because we have one page that says Bitcoin and then we have like hundreds of other pages. That are doing other <laughs> sure, things. could be. Um, yeah. Um, but those restrictions are, are, are very interesting. Um, there, you know, I, I can, I'm like, scratching my head thinking like why do those restrictions exist? Um, that, you know, like I can imagine some rationale. Um, I'm sure that whatever is being done is overly broad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did a Facebook yeah. live uh, video today. It was less than five minutes long, and it was a quick explainer video for people to just understand how does mining work, why it's not a Ponzi scheme, and what the mechanisms are for using computers to mine and verify transactions like the way a bank does. That was it. Um, our marketing uh, team attempted to go ahead and just, you know, promote it on Facebook to make it more widely seen. Blocked not allowed. We have not been able to advertise anything on our channels across Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube. So you same companies again and again here. It's Facebook, it's Twitter, it's yeah, Google. And I'm just wondering, you know, at what point do we uh, kind of open this up a little bit so that, you know, we have to draw a line somewhere, but you know, it just seems to me that I mean, there's something that's to be said. Really, really, I mean, it, like one, that surprises me, but two, <laughs> it shows just how much uh, clout and uh, distribution power is concentrated in the hands of a handful of platforms. Yes. And in a way, what it does is it highlights uh, the rationale for the blockchain and Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to begin with, which is that you're trying to uh, <laughs> like create a, a more uh, decentralized um, you know, system that doesn't rely upon like the like five institutions or one institution or one government or whatever it is That's right. um, to, to approve. So in a way, this is like, you know, proof positive of the rationale for, for the importance of, of your work. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate that um, we unfortunately are beholden to a handful of tech platforms to get the word out. And certainly as a presidential candidate, I mean, I've got a social media team and we're like, you know, Instagram living and the rest of it. So I get it. Right. And, uh, and if you're not <laughs> on these platforms and it's like you don't exist. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, so to entrepreneurs out there, in a way, what we need is we need some more uh, decentralized social media platforms. So I don't know how you do that because of the fact that um, ubiquity in that context obviously ends up driving utility. There, there's right. definitely a number of them on the way. I've, I've come across a few of them myself, and there's a, a range of things that they're trying to do to create a decentralized environment for social media, and they run into similar problems um around mostly around privacy because they don't want to hold the data but in order for their systems to actually be smart enough for for provisioning the data they run into problems of do we hold the data or do we allow the users to control the data and it's an interesting problem because you know we've seen what data with the cambridge analytics problem did to facebook and so what i see is a lot of these blockchain projects that don't want to go down that path and yet are confronted with sometimes they need some of the data and they're trying to figure out what the line is where the balance is so they're not seen as doing exactly what nobody wants. So it's that's a, so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I want to tell you guys a joke uh, that I told at this blockchain event I spoke at earlier uh, this week, which was um, someone asked the question, um, why is Bitcoin worth $7,000? And then the response was, why is $7,000 worth $7,000? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, but, but it, it you know, it, it's, uh, it, because what, what you're describing really is, um, you know, um, and, and it took me a little while to get it. It took me a little while to understand uh, the ethos of what was possible and, and what the community is driving towards. Uh, but I'm, I'm convinced that we need to move in that direction as fast as possible. And we need to replace this mindset of resource scarcity that is taking over certainly the U.S. in a very dark way mm. and replace it with a mindset of abundance and future orientation. And, and what is still possible. Um, and the, the fact that, uh, you know, we can uh, build a very different kind of society very quickly, um, but we need to get our acts together and make it. And, and this is one of the things I told the, the Bitcoin folks too. Um, so I'm running for president, you know, uh, and some people, probably many of the people listening to this right now will think to themselves, oh, this guy seems sort of interesting, but the but is there's no way he can win. <laughs> Something along those lines. We've heard that before, um, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I'm heading uh, to Iowa for the eighth time um, next week. 
and what i i boil it down to people is like i'm an asian guy and asians are really good at tests.